Hey, my name is Matt Johnson with whoismatt.com, and this video is the second video in my series all about fast filmmaking settings for the Sony FX30. The first video in the series was a deep dive into the menus of the camera. While well, this video is gonna expand on that and show you all of my settings that I use for the custom modes, custom buttons, custom menu, and function menu. So if you film weddings, documentaries, basically anything where you need to be able to shoot very quickly, I'm gonna be showing you how to put the exact settings that you need at your fingertips so you can film very fast with this camera and not waste any time trying to remember where certain settings in the menu are. Now to start, if you haven't watched my menu setting video, I will link to that in the corner and down in the video description, and I highly recommend watching it because this video builds on that one. Second, and more importantly, if you want to save time, you can click the link down in the description below to download a settings file for the FX30 that you can load into your camera and immediately start using all these settings. No need to follow through the entire video. That settings file is completely free, my gift to you. With that out of the way, let's get started by talking about custom buttons. Let's start off with custom modes. Custom modes are gonna enable you to switch between camera frame rates and resolutions very fast. So if you press the mode button up here in the top left of the camera, you're gonna see that we're in the video movie settings. And down here, you're gonna notice that you have three settings, MR1, MR2, and MR3. If you've used a Sony photo camera like the a7S III or a7 IV, et cetera, those cameras have a mode dial at the top with three custom modes. The FX30 has just internalized those custom modes into the camera menu, but they work the exact same way. Side note, when you're accessing your save modes, you're gonna see there are actually four more custom modes labeled M1 through M4. Don't trust these settings as they're only saved on your memory card and when you format the card, it will delete them. So yeah, you don't wanna do that. Let's set up custom mode preset one. To do that, you're gonna to wanna to go into the menu, go down to the red camera icon over to image quality recording, file format, and here's where you have two options. You can either select XAVC S 4K or you can select XAVC HS 4K. The reason I usually recommend XAVC S 4K is that if you go down here to movie settings, you're gonna see that you have access to the 30p frame rate, which is a frame rate that I prefer to shoot in whenever I'm filming certain parts of weddings. But if you are somebody that does not ever film in 30p, go up here to file format, change this to XAVC HS 4K, and you're not going to have access to a 30p option. You only have 24 or 60, but that's fine. Don't worry about it. For now though, I'm gonna leave this set to XAVC S, but that's how you change it if you want to. Then under movie settings, also make sure that your record setting is set to the highest bit rate possible, 100M422 10-bit. And then you can press the menu button, press the menu button again to go out. And now we need to adjust a few camera settings here. So for your shutter speed, you're gonna wanna use the big wheel on the back to change it to 150th shutter speed. Your ISO should be set to 800 if you are using S-Log3. And then for your aperture, I'm gonna have this set to F4 because this is an F4 lens. But if you have a wider aperture lens, usually F2.8 is a great option. Next, press the number two button on the camera, which is how you access your white balance controls. And for Kelvin values, make sure you're down here with the Kelvin setting. I would set this to 5,000 Kelvin. This is a nice white balance for outdoor filmmaking. Of course, you can change this to different presets if you want to, if you're going indoors, et cetera, but by default, 5,000 Kelvin's great. Then let's press menu, and it's time to save this custom mode. Go to the shooting menu, go down to shooting mode, camera set memory, select that, and you're gonna see here that you have one, two, three, then M1 through M4. You never wanna use M1 through M4, but you do want one through three. So setting one here, we're going to select this, and now, it has says registered, which means that any time that you press the mode button on the camera and go down there to MR1, which if I go to it, it's gonna disable my screen recorder, so I'm not gonna to go to it, but whenever you go to MR1, that is going to automatically and instantly change your camera to these settings. And your camera will be in 4K at 24 frames per second. And this setting here is what I use whenever I want to film in normal speed, meaning not in slow motion. This setting is especially important for any video clips that you are going to need audio for, such as a wedding ceremony or wedding toasts or an interview, etc. You're going to want to make sure that your audio and video matches up. So 4K 24P is very important. Great setting to have accessible in MR1 in the mode menu. Next, let's set up custom mode two. Everybody loves slow motion, right? And because the FX30 can record beautiful 60 frames per second in 4K, it's definitely worth having this set as a custom mode on your camera. So press the menu button, 
We're gonna go back up to image quality recording. We're gonna go back down to movie settings and for recording frame rate, you're gonna wanna change this from 24p to 60p. For your record setting for this, you're gonna wanna make sure this is set to the higher 200M422 10 bit, better quality. You want that better quality. And then let's press back to go out of the menu here. And for your shutter speed, you're gonna wanna increase that from 1 50th to 1 1 25th, which is double the frame rate, roughly. It's rough, it's not gonna give you exact, unfortunately. If they ever add a shutter angle feature, then we can get exact. Sony, add shutter angle, that'd be fantastic. Then uh, make sure that your aperture is set to the same. It's currently F4, you can set to F2.8 if you want. Then leave ISO on 800 and white balance on 5000. And now, you're about ready to record in 4K60, but we need to save this as a custom preset. So, we're going to press the menu button, go back down to shooting mode, camera set memory, and we're going to set this to preset two. Now what's great is that anytime you press the mode button, MR1 is gonna be 24 frames per second, MR2 is going to be 60 frames per second. Custom mode three, the final custom mode. We're gonna set this to something really cool. So Sony managed to cram the ability to record 4K at up to 120 frames per second in this thing. So you should definitely make room for that in the third position of your custom modes. So press the menu button. Let's go up here to image quality recording, movie settings, 60p, pff, we don't want that, we want that 120p, baby. Make sure for record setting, you select the highest bit rate as well, 280M, 422.10-bit, gonna be gorgeous, gorgeous. Shutter speed, we're gonna wanna crank that up to 1 250th, which is roughly double, 1 1 20th. F4, ISO 800, 5000 Kelvin, that is all good to go, so we're gonna press menu, we're gonna go to shooting mode, camera set, memory, we're gonna set this to three. Bam, registered. Now I personally am more selective when I choose to film in 120 FPS as I find it a bit too slow at times, but if you're filming something that happens really fast, like a wedding couple running, or you really just need to maximize the amount of footage you can get, 120 FPS will do that for you. Keep in mind though, that the FX30 does crop in 1.6 times when you're recording at 120 frames per second in 4K. Look how tight that is. It's like, bam, we're real tight on me here and I'm on a, what, 24 millimeters right now on this lens, yeah. Pretty tight, so keep that in mind. You now have set up your custom modes, and anytime you wanna access these custom settings, you can simply press the mode button and select MR1 for 24 FPS, MR2 for 60 FPS, and MR3 for 120 FPS, all in 4K. It's so fast, you are going to love it. Next, we have custom buttons. Custom buttons are what most people think of when they think of customizing a Sony camera. This camera's covered in buttons that say numbers one through six on it. There's even one hidden up here, look at that. Little six hidden up there, that's cool. What's great though is that basically every single button on the camera is customizable. You aren't just limited to these six numbered buttons. Now that said, you don't necessarily want to change a button that's already labeled for doing something too much from what they're labeled because if you borrow a friend's FX30 to use, it can make using it a major pain. So we aren't gonna go completely crazy with customizations, but we are gonna make some really nice tweaks. Open the menu, go down to the yellow toolbox at the very bottom, operation customize, and you're gonna wanna select the video camera custom key dial settings. This is the photo you want the video. Starting off at the rear, rear one is set to focus magnifier, and that's great, yeah. Leave it on focus magnifier, it's labeled that, that way you can punch in really easily, just move your thumb over, punch in and out, that's great. Rear two, not set, we gotta set this. Yes, let's set this. So we're going to select button two, and then we're going to go into the menu here and go up to color slash tone, select LUT. And this is gonna let you toggle your LUT off and on on your clip when filming, which can be really helpful. So now if I have my camera out right here, all I need to do is press this little button here and I can change the LUT that I'm using just by pressing the four button on the back of the camera. Back in the menu now, back to custom key settings here. So custom button three, we gotta set three as well. This is, the, this is the middle button in the center of the circle. You're going to want to go up to the red camera icon go to image stabilization and change this to focal length. This way, if you're using a manual focus lens and you want to dial in the focal length that your lens is using, you can access this very quickly by pressing the center button. If you do not ever use manual focus lenses and you don't wanna deal with that, you don't have to set this, but that's what I have it set to. Number four is set to zebra display select. That is the default and that's great. It's labeled, that way you can turn your zebras off and on. That's awesome. Five is set to peaking display. You can turn your peaking lines off and on. That's really awesome too. I'd leave that set to default, but ooh, button six here. Long press TV auto slash manual. Pff, now we changing this thing, okay? 
That's cool if you want to leave it at that, but considering that we already have the camera set to all manual filmmaking, you're not going to need auto anything. So let's go in here, let's change this. Go over here to autofocus, manual focus, focus assistant, focus map display select. This is fantastic because now, press the menu button here. Anytime I want to access the focus map, I press down, bam. Super helpful when adjusting focus. Mm, love it, love it, love it. Moving on to the top buttons now. Oh, look, another long press AV auto slash manual. Nope, nope, we're filming manually here. We don't need this setting. So let's change this here. We're gonna go to the AF MF setting here. We're gonna select AF slash MF selector toggle. This way you can press one button, the literally the number one button on your camera, and it's gonna let you change from autofocus to manual focus with your lens. This is wonderful if you need to change things very quickly, just hit the button, immediately be able to change to manual focus and make some changes to your focus, I love it. Number two, set to white balance by default, I love this setting, leave it at that. Number three, ooh, this is interesting, by default it's set to ISO, but we already have the scroll wheel on the back set to ISO, so we're gonna change that. We do not want this to be set to long press ISO slash manual, no, we don't want that. Let's change this to something really cool. We're gonna go up here to image quality recording, go down to breathing compensation. This is fantastic if you're using a native Sony lens and you want to make sure that it does not breathe and you want it to be very smooth focus transitions, turn on breathing compensation this way. All you have to do is press button three on the top if you wanna turn this off or on, I love it. The top button four is this kind of nipply button up here at the top. It's a nipple, right? That's what people usually call it. Like it's a little joystick nipple thing. Yeah, um, by default, this is set to focus standard, which basically makes the camera focus again. You don't need that. No, let's change this up here. Go over here to shooting shutter slash silent, and you're gonna wanna select variable shutter settings. The variable shutter's gonna help you if you're ever dealing with flicker from varying lighting scenarios. And by default, as the camera's set up now, this setting isn't actually gonna work, but we're going to make it work in a moment once we get to the function menu settings. There's another setting we're gonna change in there, then it's all gonna work. So yeah, you're good. Lastly, five is set to movie shooting, giant big red record button. Yeah, let's just leave that to record. That makes, that makes sense. Seems like a good idea. Cool. Front, we got front. We got one button up here in the front. By default, it is set to movie shooting. And you know what? I like that. Movie shooting is cool. Yeah, just leave it on default. That's great. Good to have it there. Next, we have lens. And certain Sony lenses have custom buttons that you can customize on them. In this case, this old 16 to 35 F4 uh, does not. But if it did, you can press the button to do stuff. By default, it's set to focus hold. I just leave it on focus hold. But if you want to change that, you can. At the bottom here, we got dial slash wheel. Check it out here. So by default here, the front wheel is set to adjust your aperture, the back wheel is set to adjust your ISO, and the rear dial is set to adjust your shutter speed. I leave these all to default. They work great. If you want to tweak them though, here's where you can tweak them. Guess what? It's function menu time. Yes, custom buttons are done. We got to customize the function menu, which if you press the FN button on the back, that brings up this little menu. What is this though? We gotta customize all this stuff. What's it doing? Yeah, let's customize this thing. Go to the menu, go to the function menu settings. And at the top, these are all this function menu settings for camera mode, photo mode. You don't want that. We want video mode. So make sure you only change the settings down here. For the top row, by default at the start, set to audio recording level. Yeah, you're definitely gonna want access to that feature. Leave it on that by default. Next is focus mode. Leave that on focus mode. You're gonna to to be able to change your focus modes quickly. Here's where you can do that. Then you have your focus area. This is where you can change where the camera is choosing to focus. Yeah, that's good by default. But then we get to recording frame rate. We already have our custom mode set up. We do not need to be able to access the recording frame rate from the function menu. So let's change this here. We're gonna go into autofocus slash manual focus and we're going to face eye priority and autofocus. We're gonna give you that as an option. That way, if you are filming something and it's trying to focus on somebody's face, but you're like, no, I want you to focus on this other thing over here, you can disable that there. That's a nice little feature to have access to occasionally whenever you need it. Next, we also have S and Q frame rate. We don't need that either. Let's not worry about that. We're gonna change this here too. And we're gonna change it to zebra. Here to zebra display. We're gonna set this to zebra display. And then we have picture profile at the end. Now we're not gonna be changing the picture profile like that. So no, we're gonna go back over here to zebra display. We're gonna set it to zebra level. That way you can not only turn on and off your zebras from the function menu, you can also adjust the level of them. I know there's a custom button to turn on and off the zebras, but it's nice just to have it right here. That way if you ever forget, 
It's right there if you need it. We got the bottom row to deal with now though, and we basically need to change every single one of these settings. So by default, you have these settings for the zooming in and out, speed controls. Mm, if you wanted to use those, you could, but I would don't think you're gonna need it. I would change this here. First off, we're gonna need to adjust some steady shot settings. So we're gonna go over here to image stabilization and select steady shot. We're gonna set this to steady shot, that way you can toggle between standard and active modes right from the function menu. Next, we're gonna change this other zoom speed and we're going back down here to autofocus, manual focus, peaking display, and we're gonna set this to peaking display. And then we have peaking level, that way we can turn the peaking off and on and we have the peaking level controls just like we had zebra off and on and zebra level controls. Very useful to have. Wait a second, look, there's steady shot and there's steady shot, Matt, you chose it twice. Yeah, I know, I just, I like having steady shot right there on like that left corner. It's just quicker to access by like a few button presses. Yeah, I like it there. Now let's change that steady shot here because clearly we do not need it twice. And we're gonna go over here to grid lines down here and we're gonna select grid line display. And then instead of zebra level here, cause we already have that twice, we're gonna change that to grid line type. That way, if you wanna have grid lines, you wanna adjust them up, maybe you want rule of thirds for a bit, maybe you wanna have your 235 to one aspect ratio, you can have that accessible there. And then lastly, very, very important. Remember, we have this custom nipple here set to variable shutter speed controls, which hey, you may need sometimes. You're gonna to wanna to go in here and change this from recording media settings, which we do not need to worry about, to variable shutter. And this way you're gonna be able to change the variable shutter off and on in your function menu and then use the nipple control button on the top to adjust your shutter speed up and down. And that's it for the function menu. But even with the custom modes, custom buttons and function menu set up, you still will need to occasionally dig into the menus. Thankfully, Sony gives you one last option called My Menu, which is this nice big star up here at the top. Ooh, My Menu, it's shouting at you, saying My Menu, that's what you want. And My Menu is really cool because it's a customized menu that will only include the settings that you want. I've gone through all of the menus on this camera and narrowed down everything that you need to a small group so you don't need to dig through pages and pages of menus. So we're gonna start by going over here to My Menu setting, and you're gonna see the setting in here that says Display from My Menu. What this does, is awesome because it basically makes it that every single time you press the menu button, it's gonna open the menu to your My Menu setting. So even if you were like buried down here, super deep, it's gonna be like, nope, every, you press the menu button, goes right to My Menu. I would not turn that on yet because we're about to be digging through the menus a lot, but once we have this set up, turn this to on, it's gonna be really useful to you. Let's add some things to this menu by going up here to Add Item. And for subheading one, we're gonna fill, wanna fill up subheading one here with the most used and accessed settings that you're gonna need access to. So let's go here to Add Item. We're gonna go to Image Quality Recording File Format, and we're gonna add that to My Menu 1. Then we're going to add Movie Settings right below that also to My Menu 1. And this way, anytime that we need to access these settings here, they're gonna be available right here in My Menu 1. Bam, bam, there's your Movie Settings, there's your file formats, very easily accessible. Now let's keep on with Menu Subheading 2. These are settings that I rarely use, but it's still nice to have access to them. So we're gonna go down here to Add Item, and we're gonna to go to Media, Record Media Settings, and we're gonna add that to My Menu 2. Next, let's go in and add picture profile to my menu two as well. Then we're also going to want to add monitor brightness, which is down here under monitor, monitor brightness, add that down there. And what the heck, let's throw in camera set memory in case you need to save those memory settings again. And we'll also throw in some of the custom button settings in case you need to access those. So custom key slash dial, and function menu settings. If you ever need to tweak those on the fly, you can access those, those settings quickly instead of needing to go all the way down to the toolbox icon. And yeah, that's good for subheading two. Now, go back here to the star menu, and we got menu one, menu two with more settings. We have one final menu though. And this custom menu I call the dangerous menu. Like I want this setting to be far removed from everything else, so I put in the dangerous category. But we're gonna go here to add item, we're gonna go to media, we're gonna select format. We're gonna to add to my menu three, bury it down there. That way, whenever you're going through your custom menu, you can access your file format, movie settings, recording media settings, everything else that you might need to access occasionally. And then you got format way down here at the bottom. So that way, if you need to access it, you can because you're gonna to need to format your cards after you shoot, but it's kind of buried out of the way there. You're only gonna access this stuff and then you can't accidentally get to it, which is good to have. So 
there is your custom menu. And that is how you customize your FX30 for fast filmmaking. Remember, you can still download my FX30 settings file. It's completely free and you can load it onto your FX30 and immediately have all of my settings and custom buttons set up. No need to dig through all these menus or follow along with this whole video. You can download that file down below. I will also link down below to my other videos for the FX30 as well as my color presets that work great with the FX30 and make the footage that you film with it look incredible. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Thank you.